Oh, there we go. Did you just come up from center earth? It was hot down there. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Uh, did you discover anything? I'm about, about to share some of it with Sounds you right good. now. All right, guys. And you guys. Stay tuned. <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're starting things off with a very recent and unsettling piece of news. That being that the Earth's core could be leaking. So by studying ancient lava, scientists have uncovered a potential leak from Earth's core. This research was published last year in scientific journal Nature. What they found in this ancient lava was a large amount of helium-3, which is usually only found deep inside the Earth, like in the core. So what this means, potentially, is that stuff from Earth's core might be leaking out. Now before this, scientists thought the core was isolated from outer layers, so this is like finding a leak in a supposedly sealed container, something scientists hadn't thought was possible before. So what does this mean? Well, helium-3 doesn't usually stick around for long. It tends to escape into the atmosphere and eventually into space. Finding it on the surface suggests it originated from deep within the Earth. Again, like from the core. Forrest Horton, a geochemist involved in the study, explained that this study, quote, raises more questions than it answers. So there is a lot of work to do. Up next, we have the discovery of a large metal ball located in Earth's core. Meaning that we now know that Earth is not simply made of just a crust, a mantle, and a liquid outer and solid inner core, no. In fact, two scientists in Australia made a recent discovery that has led them to believe that smack dab in the middle of our planet is a gigantic solid metallic ball that sits inside of the solid inner core. This thing is huge. I'm talking. 400 miles thick, huge. The new discovery has been referred to as Earth's innermost inner core. Makes sense, straight to the point. It's fitting. As I said, it sits inside the solid inner core we've all come to know and love since its discovery in 1936. The innermost core was found using seismic waves that reverberate through the entirety of the planet, which is like crazy advanced technology. Through these advancements, scientists noticed a difference in the way atoms are packed in the inner and innermost core. Both are assumed to be made of an iron nickel alloy with small amounts of lighter chemical elements, but the differences between the two layers of the inner core which give Earth its magnetic field and protect us from harmful radiation is baffling. And it also goes to show that we truly know nothing about what we think we know about this planet so far. Now let's talk about the deepest drilled hole in the world, the Kola Super Deep Borehole. So this was a drilling project carried out by the Soviet Union where scientists attempted to drill as far into the earth as they possibly could. Now why did they do this? Well they claimed they were doing it for science but I think it was really just that the Soviets wanted to be the first ones to possibly reach the Earth's core. It was a competitive time. The drilling started on May 24th, 1970 and lasted for 19 years. Now, was it a success? Well, this borehole goes way, way down, like ridiculously deep. Again, it's the deepest hole that humans have ever dug into the Earth's surface. At its deepest point, it reached a mind-boggling depth of about seven and a half miles, or about 12 kilometers. Just to get a sense of how deep that really is, observe this image here. I was gonna call it a graph. I don't think it's quite a graph, but it's, as you can see, deeper than Mount Everest is tall, larger than the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs and deeper than the Mariana Trench. So what exactly did they find down there? Well, they discovered some pretty cool stuff. They found out more about the Earth's layers, like the crust and the, and the mantle, but eventually they had to stop drilling because it got too hot and the equipment couldn't handle it anymore. It would have actually started to melt the equipment. Next up, we have the discovery of ancient planets hiding below Earth's crust. In the 1980s, a discovery was made. Two continent-sized blobs made up of unusual materials were discovered deep within the Earth near its center. One is located beneath Africa and the other beneath the Pacific Ocean, and each one is twice the size of our moon. A much more recent study done in 2023 has revealed that the blobs, which were once thought to be anomalous, are actually 
actually the remnants of an ancient planet called Thea that violently collided with Earth billions of years ago, and this collision is believed to have been the same collision that created Earth's moon. Originally, it was believed that when Thea collided with the Earth, it simply bounced off, but the remains of Thea were never found in the asteroid belt or in meteorites. This study shows that Thea was actually absorbed into the young Earth, and that the reason for these blobs being made up of unusual materials is that they actually belong to a separate ancient planet, and that is pretty cool. Next, let's talk about the dark biosphere, more commonly referred to as the deep biosphere, but for the sake of dramatics, of course, I just had to start with the dark biosphere. So this is a pretty fascinating aspect of our planet that most people don't really know much about, or think about even. When we think of life down below, it's usually underwater life that we're thinking about, but there's also this hidden world teeming with life deep below the ground, beyond the soil and the rocks that we see. There's a whole other ecosystem thriving in the darkness. It stretches deep into the Earth's crust, going down several kilometers. Now, how is it possible for life to exist so far underground, where it's dark and seemingly inhospitable? Well, like Jeff Goldblum says in Jurassic Park, life uh, finds a way. The deep biosphere is home to a variety of microorganisms that have adapted to survive in extreme conditions. These organisms don't rely on sunlight like plants do with photosynthesis. Instead, they get their energy from chemical reactions that occur in the rocks and the minerals underground. Some can even survive on nutrients produced by reactions between water and minerals deep within the Earth's crust. This has me also thinking about potential life in space as well, like rovers on Mars haven't really found a whole lot, but who knows what types of organisms could be living deep under the surface. Up next, we have the discovery of a massive mountain range inside of the Earth's mantle. The discovery was made using seismic waves to scan the inside of the planet, and what they found was shocking, like an entire landscape inside of the Earth shocking. In 2019, scientists found this entire interior mountain range with peaks even taller than Mount Everest. These peaks and subsequent valleys are formed by rising plumes of hot rock, and the discovery has shocked scientists, for lack of a better word. At one time, the interior of the Earth was thought to be fairly basic, made up of a crust, a silica-based mantle, and an outer and inner core. We know, though, that there's also an innermost core, and as technology advances, our understanding of the Earth's interior advances with it, and we realize that we really know nothing. But we're learning. Always learning. All right, now I mentioned that super deep borehole that the Soviets started drilling back in the 70s and how it taught us more about Earth's layers. But there's also an urban legend about something else they may have discovered while drilling, something much more disturbing. At one point, their drill broke through into a cavity. The scientists decided to lower sensory equipment down there to see what was up, including a microphone. Now they recorded 17 seconds of audio, which went on to be dubbed as the sounds of hell. The audio they picked up was pretty harrowing. It sounded like a crowd of people screaming in agony, and it's all reverby. And the urban legend started getting traction in the West when the story reached the Christian based broadcast television network TBN, claiming that this story was proof of the literal existence of hell. Now, whether you believe these are genuine screams coming from the bowels of hell or not, it's still a pretty disturbing recording either way. Next up, remember how I was just saying that every time we think we know something, we all of a sudden realize that we don't, like me with math. Well, buckle up, because beyond leaking cores, extra cores, secret mountain ranges, and ancient planets, recently scientists have discovered a body of water deep beneath Earth's surface. A body of water with a volume three times that of all the world's oceans, 700 kilometers underground. Within the Earth's mantle, which is a layer of hot rock between Earth's surface and its core, there is another rock, a blue rock called ringwoodite. And inside of the ringwoodite is a water reservoir. And because of the sheer amount of water being stored inside of the Earth that was previously unknown, scientists have begun to reevaluate their understanding of the origin of Earth's water. 
While some scientists believe that Earth's water arrived in comets that struck the planet and created our oceans, this new discovery supports another belief. That oceans came as a result of water seeping out of the interior of Earth. Again, we really do know nothing Jon Snow. If you get that reference, very nice. All right, next on the list is the legendary kingdom of Agartha. Agartha is a legendary realm believed by some to exist deep beneath the Earth's surface. It's part of various myths and legends from different cultures, but according to these stories, Agartha is said to be a hidden kingdom inhabited by advanced civilizations, often depicted as highly spiritual or technologically advanced beings. Now, it's said that the Agarthans possess incredible wisdom and knowledge, and beyond what we have here on the surface, the legend of Agartha is especially big in the occult conspiracy theories or alternative history. Some believe that Agartha can be reached through secret entrances like tunnels or caves. Other stories say that it can only be reached through spiritual or mystical means. Now, after World War I, German occultist groups like the Thule Society took a lot of interest in Agartha. Now, could there be a highly advanced civilization living deep beneath the earth? Uh, probably, probably not. But one thing I know for sure is that they'd be pretty hot. And finally, we have the fact that the inner core of the Earth is growing lopsided, which may be affecting the strength of electromagnetic fields in certain areas of the globe. So, the Earth's inner core has actually always been growing. Each year, a full millimeter is added to its radius. And this happens when little iron bits of the liquid core solidify and crystallize, attaching themselves to the solid inner core. The crystallization process is also called freezing, which sounds weird considering the temperature of Earth's core, but it makes a bit more sense when you realize that the freezing point of iron is actually more than 1,000 degrees Celsius, 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyways, a study revealed that the eastern part of the core is getting about 60% more iron crystal growth than the other side, making it essentially lopsided. Eventually, the crystals do redistribute throughout the core, bringing back its spherical shape, but during the time in which it experiences a lopsidedness, it is possible that it affects the strength of the magnetic field in specific areas. The discovery has also raised a theory that the eastern mantle is slightly cooler than its western counterpart, which is why freezing takes place at a higher rate on the one side. And then of course there is the theory that Earth is just hollow, which James just mentioned. Um, so yeah, who knows? All right, I wanna do a quick comment shout out. Yeah, actually, sure. Uh, this was from our uh, top 10 alien counters, more convincing than Roswell, oh, a, a, a while back. Yeah. But I saw this one, had to talk about it. It's from West Gutton 238 who writes, the illegal miners were Scooby doing the alien costumes, and they would have gotten away with it if it weren't for the meddling locals. Which I don't even have anything to say about that. It's just uh, it tickled me. It yeah. tickled me. Thank you. James is tickled. I like Scooby Doo. Awesome guys. I like Scooby Doo too. <laughs> um, well, uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Yes, um, we will. If you explore the core, let us know. Got some work to do down there. I'm just gonna jump this time. Ah!